Hi, hi, Paul. Uh, hey, how are you doing, mate? I'm doing good. Yeah. Sorry, it took me a little while. I was spending absolutely forever in the Avatar selection. And I, I can tell you look amazing. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, so, um, welcome to V-Time. Um, as you can see, we're in a shared social uh, virtual space, um, but we're, we're really you know, like in what we like to call a sociable network because um, we're actually spending time together. Um, so, um, as you can see, uh, we've done quite a bit of work with the Avatar because um, it's all about communication in V-Time and it's about having a really humanised conversation. So, my voice is driving my mouth, the lip-syncing, and I'm throwing some gestures just to sort of uh, keep that humanised conversation. But my head tracking, my head movement is me, so I'm nodding at you if you my head. Why, why, um, why did you go ahead and do gaze-based things as opposed to... Okay. You know? Yeah, so um, we wanted to um, create a control system which wasn't platform dependent. Um, we didn't want to choose a control mechanism that may be outmoded in time or may be superseded by a better mechanism. So having it just with the look at initially allows us to scale up into um, other control mechanisms that come online during the life cycle of VR. So hopefully, if you know, we get some proper um, hand tracking or um, different control mechanisms we can we can grade up so it's, it was really a, a very uh, considered design consideration from the onset um, but I think it also helps with um, maintaining the presence um, because you're not holding a controller you're not tapping a trackpad or tapping the HMD itself to initiate anything so you just really sort of believe that you you know you're interacting with the world with with just your eyes and looking at Another destination, so uh, yeah, that's nice. Uh, that's nice and nice. So, Scott, this is basically the quintessential essence of the time. We're hanging out, we're having a chat, but in beautiful, realised, virtual environments. There's places that you can't really go to in you know normal day uh, life. So it's you know it's, it's Thursday afternoon, and we're sat um, in North America in, a, in Yosemite Valley. Behind you, over your left shoulder, is uh, El Capitan, which is a mile-high granite cliff. And um, we've got all you know, some wildlife going around us just to... It's, we're doing some quite clever rendering techniques. So what we do is we create our virtual environment in full detail and then we bake it down into a stereoscopic skybox mm -hmm. and then we blend true 3D so myself and your avatar oh, a little bird over there on the rock um, this is all true 3D around us with the water and then it blends into the skybox so we can maintain this very high level of visual fidelity on a mobile device running at 60 frames per eye so 120 frames a second so yeah, we're, we're quite happy with the way that we've, we've started doing it. I thought, yeah, uh, I see it, it seems like it ends about three or four meters away, and I can see you've done some blending yep, uh, in yep. the back there, to, especially where the water drops off to make it, yep. see, and, you know, a couple more, you know, geological features to sort of, you know, fool you on, on first. I, I, I wouldn't have known that uh, <laughs> had you told me. Okay, so have I spot, have I it for you now? So I'm going to do some, um, I'm the host of the session, I invited you into the session, which is a really important um, feature of the time. So if you, if you look up about 40 degrees and look, look at the menu ball, and you invoke your system menu, if you look mm -hmm. to the right hand side, there's like a, a purple connections bubble, and if you look at that, it will spawn the connection screen. Do you have that? So you can see yep. yourself in the middle, you can see me connected, and you can see Jez in the studio is also connected to us and he's actually, uh, Jez is actually recording this um, conversation for us so we can send you this as a video file. Is he currently in the 2D mode where he is observing yep, and that's right. is therefore recording for that mechanism? That's correct, that's correct. So I'm the host and I'm going to lead us to a new destination. Um, so I think it's quite nice out here in the uh, in the in the wilderness. I think we should camp out for the night. Okay, so I've lit a fire for us, so it's nice and cozy. Um. This looks like a much larger multi-user space. How many? I see a couple, maybe like five or six. 
Yes, yeah, so at the moment we've made a, a, a decision to have four people in a V time session, although you can have multiple sessions running at once. Um, we may expand that up um, over time. I mean, we have a lot of features that are going to come through during the life cycle as we expand V time as a, you know, as a serviced application. Um, we're going to be surprising people every month with new content. Oh dear, here comes a snake. I hope he's not going to get too close. Um, so, um, so yeah, we, we're going to look. Um, but one, one of the things that um, we discovered, ooh, nice owl, um, is that you get more than four people in, it, it starts to get a bit rowdy. Um, you know, with uh, trying to have a conversation with four people, you can still, you know, in, in, in terms of, um, you know, in, just in general conversation, you can still have something that isn't, um, you know, too too scatty, and you can still have chats with other people that are sat next to you. So. It's, uh, it, it's, it's more pleasant just in that sense, but not in terms of any technical issue. I think we should maybe get some sleep because um, tomorrow is going to be a busy day um, and we're, we're going to go rock climbing. Are you okay with heights, Scott? Oh, this is, uh, yeah. It's very visceral. Same with the snake, <laughs> you know, it's some of those things that you just can't ever get over with. <laughs> Now, there's a clear decision here, you know, to, to use open wide spaces to, yeah. you know, uh, I mean, I, I guess I haven't been through all of your environments yet, but I can see no. that you're definitely going for an out outdoors feeling. Is, well, is this yeah. uh, uh, like some sort of um, philosophy that your company has about VR in general? Like this was in some way going back to the way that we um, talk anyway yeah absolutely this is a, a way of communicating I mean a lot of communications today is through a portal through a screen through um, your, your smartphone through um, some sort of software that's a, a, you know, a sociably connected application and this is exactly what VTime is but because we actually have this sensation that we're actually here together it does hark back to an older time of communication. You know, when, when you used to go round to your friend's house and knock on the door to see if they were coming out rather than, you know, phoning them up or, you know, being able to text them. You know, it's a sort of, you know, it hark, does hark back. And it is, it is um, a purposeful for us to have these strong philosophies within the time. And yeah, and, and the choice of environments, we do have some internal environments as well, but they are down to, you know, get, you know getting, taking you to, um, you know, beautiful places and been outside in, while you're inside. What I'm going to do is take you to another relaxing um, destination. Do you, wanna, do you want some champagne? I, some, I some would love some, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's gone lunchtime now, so it's okay. I think. <laughs> yeah. So what, one thing that we've, we, uh, we've also created, I mean, and it's sort of like a, a little bit of a side effect, is when you come into these environments on your own, they are very relaxing, you can almost sit and meditate um, and, and, and chill, chill out um, just listening to the, you know, the waves on the beach or the, w the wind and the water in the, in the river. Um, oh, got a little crab coming here. You want me to write about that crab, don't you? You want me to write about this little <laughs> tiny crab scuttling, <laughs> scuttling right past us? <laughs> yeah, no, I'd, re I'd really play to talk about the pelican, though. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I was just going to ask, uh, what sort of uh, looping, like, is, you know, I realize our animation is probably going to be on a loop here, you know, yeah. or is it going to be some way generated that I won't see the same thing twice? Yes, so we have an um, event generation code, so you don't get the same animations firing all the time, so they become repetitive. We have a number of, like, hero animations. So you notice like things like uh, the owl in the in in the forest and the the eagle um, that will come down again. <clears throat> and what we what we're going to do during the life cycle of these destinations, we're going to add new animations. So when you come back to them um, on updates, there will be new things that happen. And these will be like little talking points. You know, when you're in with people having a chat, you can go. You know, you can sort of go. Hey, look at that over there. And the good thing is with the, the avatars, if I'm sort of say, hey, have you seen the champagne over here? And I look over there, you know exactly which part of the scene I'm looking at, which again really helps with the communication within V-Time. Um, let's 
Let's go to another destination. So, let's go somewhere a little bit more off-world. I was up here before and I'm absolutely, I'm in love with the fact that you've, you've got the spaceship docking. Yeah, I do like it up here. It's really nice, the, uh, the, the, the sense of heights, you know, where the, the, you, you don't think that space is about being high up, but I mean, I, that's what I, I feel up here. Yeah. Yeah, so I love the audio with the uh, vibration noise. <laughs> it's pretty good. So yeah, we we spent a lot of time with the audio. Um, it is fifty percent of the experience when you're in virtual reality is the audio. You may have heard some of the the wolf cries in in the in the river destination. Again, that's part of the same event system, so you don't hear all the audio all the time. But yeah, mm -hmm. it's quite mm -hmm. it's quite cool. Um, so you've you've already seen how I'm I'm controlling the destinations. Uh, but I'd like, and what I'm going to do is, I'm going to hand over the uh, control to you. So if you want to look up at the um, at the ball and pull up your connection screen, please. Yeah. And that's grayed out at the moment. So the content library will allow you to upload images and videos to our our cloud backend and then share them in a B time session. So if you want to go to the 360 um, uh, gallery now, which is the 360 tour of Liverpool. There we are. Here we are. So you've got a little window right in front of you, a uh, little mm -hmm. gooey item. So you look at that. So w what we've done here is we've, we've curated some of our own images. Um, it's a little tour of Liverpool. I don't know if you've been to Liverpool, Scott. No, oh, I never have before, no. Okay, okay. well, we're going to go on a little virtual tour. So here we are, hovering above uh, the River Mersey, uh, and just over, just in front of you and over to my left is uh, the Three Graces. So this is a World Heritage Site. These three buildings are the main um, official port buildings of Liverpool. So Liverpool used to be the, um, the busiest uh, dock um, city in the world in like mm -hmm. in the 1700s, 1800s. A lot of trade went through Liverpool um, and these three buildings were um, sort of testament to the, the wealth that was in the city. So this was taken from a drone so we got special permission from uh, the uh, city of Liverpool uh, to fly the drone up here and take this picture um, and it's, it's pretty pretty cool. So the on the skyline there's a couple of um, silhouettes and they're the um, two cathedrals in Liverpool. So Liverpool is quite unique to have that two cathedrals in one city. Um, so we've just taken a, uh, got some photographs of those if you want to choose one of them. So, so there was an Anglican and there was the, yeah. the Metropolitan That's Cathedral, right. which I imagine is, is, is it Catholic. Yes. Oh, oh, okay, we're in the exterior here. Yeah, we're in the exterior. This is a more contemporary building, so it's uh, built in the 60s. Um, in these pictures, it is a little bit of Wurz Wally, because um, I'm actually in all these photographs. Let's see, we've got the Metropolitan Cathedral interior. Is that the next one? Uh-huh. Now, do you have a tie-in with uh, with the city of Liverpool? That's how you, you got we, the permission? Or? Absolutely. We have very good relationships with Liverpool. Uh, we've had uh, the mayor of Liverpool, uh, Sir Joe Anderson, who's been into the studio a number of times, uh, he he loves the virtual uh, reality and uh, yeah he's he's gonna we're, we're working quite close with the city um, in in a couple of projects um, uh, as a, at Starship. <laughs> I, I think upon release you, you you might have some some spirited Americans saying things about brogues trainers trousers <laughs> and <laughs> where's Wally because these are all very very unique. Uh, uh, British Britishism. Yeah, yeah, we 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 are um, we have a, a very British personality with with the with the product. Obviously, that's where we're based, and you know, all the dev team um, are, are British. But yeah, you know, there's uh, there's a few colloquialisms in there, but um, I'm sure you, you understand where it is. As I was saying before, we could, these 360, and this is quite unique for VTime as well. You've seen 360 media before in virtual reality, but we're in the same picture at the same time so this is quite this is a unique thing also can run videos again we're, we're just waiting um, for the updates to have that so you'll be streaming 360 videos in here at the same time you can enjoy them um, oh, okay. and so you have you have a space for videos and images 
video 360 videos 360 uh, images we'll also be able to we've got another environment which is like a like a, a gallery uh, that you may have seen on some of the um, press images that we've released and that shows how you can share 2d photos from your camera roll um, and also videos as well so um, th you know this is going to be a unique a unique feature to VTAR. Shall we head on with the next uh, 360 interior or do you want to go to the next environment? Um, it's you're, the you're, you're, the, you're the host Scott, yet. Uh, I'm the man. It's your, you're the man. Okay, let's see. Now as, as far as cross compatibility is concerned, um, uh -huh. you, I remember reading on the website that you were targeting uh, you know, the consumer rift. Um, obviously, we're going to be on Gear VR, and yep. there's some talk about HTC Vive. Um, do you want to talk a little bit more about that, about what it's going to be available for VTime? Yes, I can. Um, so VTime is going to be focused on mobile VR initially. We see that as the, the, the biggest um, ma potential marketplace and the most accessibility for this type of product. Our initial launch is going to be on the Gear VR and um, we will be uh, also supporting other HMD um, platforms that you know your general cardboard build um, so uh, we already have um, a good relationship with Google and um, we'll be coming out with a cardboard build in the new year we are um, official um, PSVR developers um, obviously, we have a lot of heritage, and uh, obviously, and, and actually worked for Sony in in, in previous incarnations. So mm -hmm. th um, that's um, also something which we're looking at. Um, we have we have a Vive in the studio, um, and we obviously have the um, the Oculus Rift in the studio as well. So the interesting thing is the the, the platform that we've created in terms of the communication aspects is, is um, agnostic to those platforms, so you can join in. Um, obviously, with the higher-end devices that are running much more powerful um, chipsets and, and graphic processors, that we can take the same environment that we've we've created, um, and instead of it being a, a skybox on the mobile, it will be true 3D. And um, so we've created a, a quite a clever pipeline for high-end visuals for uh, PC and console-based VR that we then scale down to run on lower end mobile devices. So mm -hmm. it'll be exactly the same experience, just more pixels and a bit shinier, maybe some dynamic lighting um, where we can afford it. But, you know, really sort of getting the communication part correct first is the, is the, is the key, because then, you know, that, that is what we are. We're in a sociable network. So, um, yeah, we want to get as many people into uh, VTAM as possible. And that is, um, VR users, so not connected to one, one platform.